Hello and welcome to this video on Sirius, the brightest star in the sky. The brightness of celestial objects is measured on a magnitude scale and the lower the number, the brighter the object. Sirius has a magnitude of minus 1.45. No star is brighter than this. Well, why is Sirius so bright? The apparent brightness of a star depends on two factors. Firstly, its intrinsic brightness, and secondly, its distance away from us. Well, Sirius is an intrinsically bright star, 25.5 times the luminosity of the sun. And also, in celestial terms, it's only 8.6 light years away. This is the seventh closest star to the sun. It's in our own backyard. Sirius is in the constellation of Canis Major, the great dog. And for this reason, it's commonly known as the dog star. As people who've seen my previous video on astronomical coordinates will know, astronomers use a coordinate system called celestial coordinates, where the Earth rotates inside something called the celestial sphere. The declination of Sirius in celestial coordinates is 16 and 3 quarter degrees south. It lies well in the southern half of the celestial sphere. Because Sirius is in the southern part of the celestial sphere, the maximum elevation, that's angle above the horizon it can reach, is quite low for many northern latitudes. For example, Manchester, England, Sirius can only get up to 19 and three quarter degrees above the horizon. This little simulation shows the path of Sirius through the night sky in Manchester, England. Interestingly, Sirius is responsible for the term dog days or dog days of summer, which dates back to Roman times. If you carefully observe the night sky over a period of time, you may notice that stars like Sirius, which rise and set, rise about four minutes earlier each day. The rising and setting times depend upon the observer's latitude, but also because of this four minute daily shift, the time of year. So let's have a look at Rome, 42 degrees north. And in this table, you've got the rising and setting times of the sun, basically we're telling you when it's daylight, and the rising and setting times of Sirius. Between early May and early August, Sirius is only above the horizon during the daytime and then can't be seen because the sky is too bright. On 3rd of August, Sirius and the sun rise exactly the same time. And shortly afterwards, Sirius becomes in the, visible in the morning twilight before the sun has risen. And if we go fast forward to 1st of September, Sirius rises a full two and a half hours before the sun. This is how the sky would look like just after midnight on the 1st of January. The ancient Romans lived in an era before electric lighting and light pollution. The sky would have been much darker at night than it is today. Sirius would have been a spectacular sight against such a dark sky. Ancient civilizations are more in tune with nature and the predictable changes in the night sky over the year and the reappearance of the brightest star in the early morning sky 
on the same day each year would have been really significant to ancient civilizations. Whereas for most people today, it's barely noticed. The ancient Romans called the month or so of sultry hot weather following the first appearance of Sirius, the dog star in the early morning sky, dog days, a phrase which still persists today. As the Earth spins on its axis, two points in the sky, known as the North Celestial Pole and the South Celestial Pole, remain fixed, and all objects appear to rotate around them. But the Celestial Poles aren't completely fixed. They move very slowly at the rate of 20.4 seconds of arc per year, due to an effect called precession. And this means that the coordinates of stars gradually change. Another thing is that the stars aren't fixed with respect to each other. Sirius is a close star and it appears to move across the celestial sphere slowly with respect to more distant stars. So if you put these two effects together, Sirius was in a different position in the year 50 than it is today. And in the year 50, the Sun and Sirius would have risen together on the 19th of July. That's 15 days earlier than it does today. All the stars in the Milky Way are in slightly different orbits around the centre. So Sirius hasn't always been the brightest star in the sky. The distances of stars from the sun and just their apparent brightness gradually changes. Sirius is gradually approaching us at a speed of five and a half kilometres a second. In 60,000 years time, it will be at its closest to the sun only 7.8 light years. At that point, it's 20% brighter than it is today. After that, Sirius will move away from the sun and in millions of years time, it'll be so faint, it won't be visible to the naked eye. This table shows a list of the brightest stars over a five million year period. You have the start year and end year, of when that particular star was the brightest star. The number of years it was the brightest star. The magnitude column gives its magnitude at its very brightest during that period. So Sirius, the current brightest star, will get a bit closer to the sun and in 60,000 years time it will hit a peak magnitude of minus 1.68. What's clear is for most of this 5 million year period, the bright star Canopus, a giant star, has been the brightest star in the sky. Canopus is a much brighter star than Sirius, being more than 10,000 times more luminous than the sun. It lies at a much greater distance, 310 light years. What's happened is that other stars, like Sirius at the moment, have appeared brighter during temporary periods when been passing the system, our solar system, at a relatively close distance. In roughly 210,000 years time, the bright star Vega will become the brightest star, a position it will hold for nearly 300,000 years. When Vega moves far away, so it's no longer the brightest star, Canopus will once again take up the crown. Back in 1862, the American astronomer Alvin Graham Clark discovered Sirius has a faint companion, which we now call Sirius B. 
Invisible light is 10,000 times fainter than Sirius A, which is the name we give the main star. The two orbit each other with a period of about 50 years, and this can tell us that the mass of Sirius B is just slightly more than the Sun's mass. So to be so faint, it must be very small, having a radius of five and a half thousand kilometers. Sirius B was only the second white dwarf star to be discovered. It's the hot, dense remnant of a star which has exhausted its nuclear fuel and is slowly cooling. The vast majority of stars in the Milky Way, including our Sun, are destined to become white dwarfs.